The National Media and Current Challenges Workshop concludes its meetings in Damascus, issuing a final communique denouncing the terrorist war against Syria. President Putin discusses with his American counterpart in the upcoming meeting on the 7th of October the situation in Syria. Army units continue to chase terrorists in Aleppo, Latakia countryside and Idlib, eliminating dozens of them. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Yerado Krikorian from the News Center in Damascus. The National Media and Current Challenges Workshop has concluded its meetings, issuing a final communique stressing that the war Syria is exposed to reflects an international and regional project targeting the country's national unity and geopolitical position, as well as its role in the Arab-Israeli conflict, particularly its support for the resistance. The communique called for developing the media strategy based on the independence of information the spirit of initiative and keenness to keep up with the scientific and technological development. The statement underlined the need to set up centers specialized in media studies and opinion polls, as well as a center for training and rehabilitating political analysts to enable them to explain events away from the deception and falsifications resorted to by the misleading news media. A special satellite is recommended that will speak for the resistance media and the progressive and pan-Arab parties. The statement also called for working out legislations that take into consideration the special nature of media work. The communique urged for diversifying media address and developing the organizational framework of the information sector. For a comprehensive coverage of the workshop, our colleague Sausan Bader has more. For evaluating the performance of the Syrian media during the fierce war on Syria and with the aim of developing the means of facing all the challenges that hindered that work, the workshop entitled The National Media and the Current Challenges was held for three days under the patronage of Prime Minister Wael Halaki at the Damaros Hotel in Damascus. I think that this workshop is very important because what it aims to achieve is to review the performance of uh, media in Syria uh, to see where uh, it did achieve uh, great points, where it did fall short of, of achieving its objectives, and then to try and draw a strategy for a better performance for the future. I think it's very important that many Arab thinkers and journalists and non-Arabs also who are active in the regional media are present here and the motto of this is to be, of this uh, uh, meeting and of these discussions is to be honest and transparent and to refer to the negative points before referring to the positive. The workshop discussed the role of the media in building the national personality and focused on the performance of media before, during and after the crisis. I think the Syrian media has been taken by surprise from the beginning of the crisis. They weren't ready for a, such a war coming from inside Syria and from outside of Syria. Especially when we can look to the Arab media coming from the Gulf during many years or the public opinion in Syria were or oriented to those uh, television. Suddenly they have changed their uh, speech and uh, their behavior and attacking Syria from every, every side. But after some months, I think, with the private sector also, not only the governmental media, they could uh, answer for some uh, uh, mistakes and uh, to clarify the real situation in, in, in Syria. And I can confirm that uh, outside of Syria also, uh, people start to look for the uh, Syrian media because they want to have a balance between what the uh, international media are saying and what the Syrian uh, media are saying. Participants pinpointed the features of the national media which stood by Syria during the current crisis, 
in the face of the flow of aggressive media reports and programs which worked on distorting facts and misleading the public opinion. At the beginning of the crisis in 2011, we didn't see a lot of Western media. We saw Russia Today and we saw Press TV and we saw Telesaw, Venezuelan TV. Um, and that's all very good, but we actually need to see more Western media. Um, some of them actually have their narrative and their script written for them already. So they come to Syria and it's, um, there's no point to them coming because they've already made up their mind. But some of them actually do make a difference. Um, some of them tell the tale. And I can give an example, Robert Fisk, for example, when he went to Malula, he, he told a very good story. Uh, Jeremy Bowen of the BBC, when he went to Malula, he told a very good story. He simply told the truth, and that was a good story. The workshop highlighted the mechanisms of reporting news during war times, a thing that demands speed and accuracy at the same time. This uh, workshop uh, expressed that uh, Syria is... Uh, uh, living its uh, life and uh, uh, and Syria can assure that uh, the style of life will continue whatever the situation is especially uh, that uh, Syria expressed uh, her itself as a country that can face uh, the obstacles and the difficulties and can win in this uh, facing uh, of uh, the uh, problems. Uh, this workshop is very important and strategic in this uh, period, ex uh, in this exceptional period in Syria because this period uh, is the end of a, I can say it's the end of, uh, of the war, uh, a certain form of war on Syria and uh, the great victory of Syria. The participants concluded that Syria, which has been the target of a global war, military and through media outlets, had not only succeeded in putting bumps on the roads of the aggressors, but also worked on correcting the dysfunction of media, which witnessed many changes during the past two and a half years. After staggering for a while under the blows of the current war on Syria, which targeted all aspects of life, including media, this workshop highlighted the importance of coming up with an overall strategy that would rebuild the whole society. So some better Syrian television news in English. Russian President Assistant Yuri Oshakov stressed that the situation in Syria will be a major topic in the meeting between Presidents Putin and Obama on the 7th of October. Oshakov added that Russia is open to all these contacts which help discuss regional and international issues, especially in terms of finding a peaceful solution to the crisis in Syria. He pointed out that Russia is not preparing any new proposals for the upcoming summit. Syrian Arab army units today clashed with terrorists who had tried to infiltrate into secure areas in Aleppo and its suburbs, killing and injuring a large number of them and destroying their missiles, launchers, bases and mortar guns in the city's northern countryside. Another army unit eliminated a terrorist group who had tried to infiltrate in the direction of Dahret Abed Rabbo in Aleppo western suburbs. A third army unit destroyed missiles, launchers and motor guns and killed terrorists in the villages of Aquarius, al jdeide Arbid and Rasm al -Abud. A military source who reported this added that scores of terrorists were killed and their arms loaded vehicles were destroyed on al bab Aleppo Road and Kafar Hamra. Sounds of successive explosions were heard in the place. In the city of Aleppo, an army unit killed five terrorists and wounded others who had tried to infiltrate into Salah al-Din neighborhood. Three terrorists were meanwhile killed and others were injured as they were trying to enter the ancient part of the city from al suwaqa direction. A Syrian Arab army unit has eliminated an armed terrorist group belonging to the Qaeda-linked so-called Islamic State of Iraq and Levant in Binnish in Idlib suburbs, including the leader of the group, Abdel Razak Juma Suesim. 
In Latakia Mountains, the army eliminated a large number of terrorists, among whom the leader of the so-called Islamic State of Iraq and Levant, Abu Ayman al-Iraqi, was identified. The army also destroyed cars loaded with arms, ammunition, and heavy machine guns in the villages of Khan al joz and al rawda in Latakia northern suburbs. In Homs suburbs, the army has thwarted a terrorist attempt to infiltrate from Lebanon into Tel Kalah countryside. Two terrorist groups had tried to enter through Al Ghaida site into Syrian territories. The army clashed with them and killed six of them. The rest fled into Lebanese territories. In Homs countryside, Syrian Arab army continued to chase terrorists in a Samalil village in Al Hule countryside, killing scores of them. The army responded to calls by local inhabitants to confront invading terrorists who entered the village and committed acts of terror against them. TV camera accompanying the military operation showed the locations of Jabhat al Nusra terrorists and how the army destroyed their headquarters and warehouses in the area. Also in Homs countryside, terrorists tried to infiltrate into Jubbil Jarrah village in order to attack army positions. Jubbil Jarrah town is located east of Homs, which the terrorists tried to attack repeatedly because of its strategic importance connecting Homs with Hama and leading to Iraq and Jordan. Terrorists launched RPG rockets and shells against the town trying to expel its inhabitants before the army interfered and put an end to their terrorism. The U.S. policy towards Syria is still marked with hostility through providing training and weapons to terrorists inside the country. According to Sky News, the CIA is expanding a clandestine effort to train opposition fighters in Syria amid concern that U.S.-backed militias are rapidly losing ground. The CIA has sent additional paramilitary teams to secret bases in Jordan in recent weeks in a push to double the number of rebel fighters getting CIA instruction and weapons before being sent back to Syria. Now to latest business and market news, but after a short break, stay tuned. Welcome back. The Minister of Industry said that the final budget appropriates of the investment plan estimated at 1,625,000,000 Syrian pounds. The ministry has allocated about 1,000,000,000 and 3,000,000 Syrian pounds for the replacement and renovation projects and about 316,000,000 Syrian pounds to complete the last year projects. On the other hand, the ministry asserted that the investment value in the central administration did not exceed 11.3,000,000 Syrian pounds. The Director General of the Establishment for Construction Materials Trade, Omran, said that the establishment will start selling cement to citizens in the near future for overcoming the crisis effects and preparing for the reconstruction. The Director added that the next step of the establishment is to open new selling centers for all construction materials as the establishment is committed to distributing cement, iron and other construction stuff according to a competitive plan with the private sector. He also said that the establishment sales reach about 12,000 tons a day, while they did not exceed 1,500 tons a day in the previous years. The prices of U.S. crude oil fell after the biggest gain in two weeks, while Brent's premium oil widened from the narrowest in more than a week. Futures slid 0.5% after jumping 2% yesterday to the highest price since September 20. Brent for November settlement fell 43 cents to reach more than 108 U.S. dollars a barrel. fell after the Standard & Poor's 500 index rose the most in almost two weeks yesterday, while European stocks were little changed after yesterday's biggest decline in a month as the shutdown of the U.S. government entered a third day and the gauge of China's services industry rose to a six-month high.
The jewelers assembly set the price of the 21 karat gold at 6,800 Syrian pounds per gram, while the Rashadi golden coin was set at 3,500 Syrian pounds and the English coin was set at 56,500 Syrian pounds. Finally, the U.S. dollar slated the week as leveling eight months versus the euro as the U.S. government's partial shutdown added to concern that growth will slow and prompt the Federal Reserve to delay tapering monetary stimulus. Euro demand was bolstered before a report analysts said will show retail sales in the currency block rose in August. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syrianonline.sy. Till next Saturday, enjoy your weekend.